Hi, welcome back. If you haven't joined before, my name's Christy and I'm currently seven weeks pregnant with my second child with my husband, Steve. We already have a little girl called Grace who's just over one year old. So by the time this baby arrives, um, Grace will be about 21 months. Um, so they'll be nice and close in age, but I'm filming pregnancy updates week by week. So if you want to carry on seeing these, then please hit subscribe and I'd love for you to follow our journey. It's a Friday night, by the way, and Steve's just in the next room watching a bit of TV. So hopefully the sound is okay. But I wanted to give you an update, obviously, on the seventh week of pregnancy, how I've been finding it and how I've been getting on symptom-wise. And I'll also show you my bump at the end of the video as well. So being brutally honest, week seven has been the hardest week for me so far. I don't deal well with the first trimester of pregnancy. I was hoping that was a bit of a fluke with Grace, but obviously it's not. And the sickness has just been completely overwhelming this week like I feel nauseous all the time and then I'm also sick quite a lot of the time as well just like actually physically vomiting multiple times a day like today I've been sick three or four times and it's firstly just a bit of a struggle keeping food down it's a struggle for me to drink enough water because I feel like all of that liquid sitting on my stomach actually makes me feel worse and I can feel it like all like swishing around and that, that makes the nausea worse, which then makes the sickness worse. And it's all this like really vicious cycle. And I don't know whether it's like worse this time or whether I just have forgotten what it was like before, but it this week in particular, it's just gone beyond being like a physical thing now and now it's becoming like a real mental challenge for me like it's really really getting my mood down being sick all the time and just not feeling myself like all of my foods that I like to eat I'm not enjoying the only thing that I really feel like I can eat that doesn't really interfere with me is like plain buttered toast it's it's just really, I'm just having a bit of a miserable week, to be honest. And like, I think it's important to be honest about what this early stage of pregnancy feels like. Because for a lot of women, not only are you feeling at your worst, like physically, but also obviously for a lot of women, myself included, I haven't really told that many people. Like I've told my close family and my close friends and that's it. And although they are helpful in that I know I can lean on them for support and stuff, it's it's like the everyone on the periphery of your life doesn't know. So like your work colleagues don't know. And like obviously it's too early for like a stranger to notice. So you're really feeling not great and no one really can can sympathise or understand why. And I think that's what makes the first trimester of pregnancy in particular quite a lonely and quite an isolating experience for a lot of women. And that's definitely kind of been my experience this week. Obviously, I want to be really clear about how grateful I am to be pregnant with this baby. Grace was a rainbow baby herself and I know how devastating pregnancy loss can be. And equally, I understand how lucky we are to have fallen pregnant naturally and not needed help in that way. So I don't want it to come across as like moaning about being pregnant because I know how fortunate and lucky we are. But like I say, I do think it's really important to share the reality of being pregnant and not every day is brilliant and, and not every day is all rainbows and smiles. And that doesn't mean that I'm ungrateful for, for what I've got. It just means that I'm human and I'm struggling through it at the minute. So the sickness is causing a lot of food aversions. Like I say, I'm struggling to eat anything particularly rich or interesting. And then I definitely found this last time and I'm finding this again. When I eat certain things and then I'm sick afterwards, 
it puts me off that thing. So I'm, <laughs> I'm getting through my repertoire of foods that I like fairly quickly and being like, right, that's off the menu for the next couple of months at least. So it's just trying to find something to eat every day that won't set me off and something that I'm kind of fancy, but I don't really fancy anything at the minute, to be honest. And then on the liquids front, like I say, I'm really struggling to drink a lot of liquid. And I normally drink quite, quite a lot of water. So not drinking a lot of water, I'm noticing a lot of follow on symptoms from that. Like I mentioned last week, like my skin's not been the best that it's ever been. Not that I have brilliant skin, but I know that it's better when I keep my water intake up. Um, but also just like generally feeling a little bit lightheaded and dizzy and a bit foggy going through life. Like I can't really think that clearly. Um, and I think Steve's noticed that sometimes he'll talk to me and I'm just like completely glazed over because it's just, I, I think I'm probably quite severely dehydrated, but I don't think it's at that point that I need to go to hospital and equally like I, I don't want to waste their time and I've got grace to think about and it's still we're still in COVID times if you're watching this in years years to come I hope we're not in COVID times anymore but we are still in COVID times and so if I ended up going to hospital to get an IV for for liquid or whatever like I feel like I'd be on there in there on my own and I don't want to do that and I don't feel like it's bad enough to be at that point but it is something that I'm concerned about because I know I'm not getting through anywhere near enough water every day even to just maintain myself as as a single person without a pregnancy to deal with as well so that's something that I really need to address in the next week I've been trying to when I can stomach liquid drink like a bit of Lucasade or a bit of Gatorade. I tried to find Powerade the other day, but I couldn't. So I had a bit of um, Gatorade, like something that's meant to really hydrate you and um, to try and just make up for what I'm losing and what I'm not really taking in. I've noticed as well that I'm feeling really, really bloated and really quite pregnant looking all the time, um, especially in the evenings when I've like eaten during the day like in the night time, I just feel so much bigger than I did the first time round. I keep thinking back to the first real bump picture that I took of Grace. I was about, yeah, about 12 or 13 weeks and <laughs> my stomach was like completely flat. And I was like, oh my God, look at the size of my bump. I'm really blooming. But like, obviously you think you're bigger at the time. But now looking at it, I look tiny compared to where, where I'm at now. Um, and I know they say that you do show more with your second one, um, but also I think just the things that I'm eating are making me bloated, like I'm eating a lot of carby foods, like the only thing I can really stomach are plain carbs, like pure savoury food. Um, and I think that's contributing to quite a pronounced bump at the moment, which I'll show you now. I don't know if you can see there as well, but it feels like my belly button is popping out already. And it did pop out quite early with Grace, probably around the four month mark. But obviously this is quite a bit earlier and it's already on the way out. So I'm expecting to have that. Did you ever have this with um, like later pregnancy where if you were going out and wearing like a tight dress, you have to put like a plaster over your belly button to try and flatten the belly button. Otherwise you just have like this little like thing poking out from your dress like that. <laughs> like, um, yeah, this <laughs> is a little earlier than I was expecting to have to contend with this symptom. It's not a lot else to report this week in terms of symptoms. It's mainly just been the sickness and like I say, the impact on my mental health. I'm sorry that this week wasn't as upbeat and positive as perhaps previous weeks have been where I've been a little bit more kind of excited and still in the novelty factor and the sickness hadn't really set in yet. But hopefully over the next few weeks it will start to get better. I remember with Grace it probably peaked at around week nine and then one day, I'm sure it was almost 12 weeks on the dot, it just switched off. I just woke up one day and I wasn't sick anymore and I didn't even have the nauseous feeling. It didn't like 
go away slowly over time it just flicked off like a light switch so I'm hoping that I've only got a few more weeks of just <laughs> misery really I'm feeling really quite self pitiful and I keep saying to Steve I'm really sorry I'm feeling so bad for myself but it is like I say just exhausting when you're in this like place of being sick all the time every day and like I say you can't really that you can only tell quite a, a close-knit um, group of people why you're feeling that way. And there's no, like, hard and fast rules. There's no reason I can't tell other people. Um, it's just I'm, I'm choosing not to, so I guess that's on me. But it still just, like I say, makes it feel a little bit lonely. And I'm looking forward to being a little bit further on in my pregnancy journey, hopefully feeling a little less sick and just ready to enjoy the, the months ahead before baby arrives. Obviously last week I gave an update on our early pregnancy scan, which was inconclusive in that um, there, were, there was no heartbeat at the time that we went. There was just a yolk sac. You couldn't even see the embryo itself. And there was also like on the bottom right hand side of the scan, there was just like a growth of some description and the sonographer thought that it might actually be another yolk sac i.e a twin um but she said it was too early to tell and we needed to come back for a scan in um she said in 10 days time it was actually eight days time that we ended up going back so we went back and had that this week and whatever was there before in terms of the second yolk sac or like a growth in in the gestational sac that like wasn't there anymore it was completely clear of anything else other than the yolk sac and the embryo which was there and it had grown and you could see the heart beating on the screen which was really really reassuring um i'm still behind in terms of the size of the embryo to what my, i think my dates are so i would have made myself on the date of the scan seven weeks and three days and the size of the embryo she said was more like six weeks and two days um, I asked if there was anything that I needed to worry about in that respect and she said no because like a matter of millimetres at this stage can make like a week or two weeks difference so hopefully I'll either catch up before I have my dating scan or uh, I'll just stay the same but I'll progress like on the same trend line if that makes sense um, and it might mean that baby is due a little bit later than what I thought so I thought my due date would be around the 2nd of January 2022 um, but the sonographer said um, that by her dates it'd be the 10th of January so I'm only about a week out but still it's a little bit worrying at this stage um, but she said it, it all looked positive and where it had progressed from the previous week that that's a really good sign um, so hopefully when I go for my dating scan um, with my NHS scan, then that will be fine. And I, like I say, either I'll catch up or I'll just stay on the same trend line. I've got my first midwife appointment next Wednesday. It'll be eight weeks and three days when I have that. Obviously, I've had the booking appointment before with Grace. And I just remember there being a huge load of questions all about like my medical history, obviously I'm expecting to answer a lot more questions this time around about my previous pregnancy and delivery. Um, and I can update you all on that at the time, but just looking forward and thinking about that appointment, I'm feeling apprehensive already about it because this time around I'm requesting to have a C-section. So with Grace, I had quite a traumatic natural delivery. I'll be able to update that, like update you all on that next week once I've had the booking appointment and once I've got through my eighth week of pregnancy, I can then give you obviously the eight week update. Um, but if you're not already, then please consider subscribing so that I can continue to update you on my pregnancy journey and beyond. And otherwise I will see you in my next one. Bye.